Hi, I am currently sat in Japan. To be more specific, I am sat in Ikibukuru. I am having a fantastic time. We all are. Kim is here as well. She is currently upstairs. We have had three very jam-packed days so far. We have a lot left to go. And I want to take you guys on this adventure with us. Whether you are just interested in Japan or if you're just a fan of me and you want to watch me in Japan or you love Nintendo because we do a lot of Nintendo stuff. It is our goal on this trip to, <laughs> to do everything Pokemon possible, to find anything cool Nintendo Switch that you can't get anywhere else, only in Japan, and you know, buy it. And finally, just like on a side mission, I just decided to focus on Dragon Quest and buy as much cool Dragon Quest stuff as I can find. Here's a quick look at what's to come throughout this adventure. first thing we came across here were these gacha stations. There was like a handful of them on the wall here. At this point, we had no idea these things were freaking everywhere and would dominate our trip. But you, there's essentially just these little so, pods. There's this Pikachu that Kim really wants. Yeah. We tried once already. I'm gonna try oh, again. Off. Okay. You put in a few dollars or like 300 yen and then a pod will fall out at random. You open it up and that's the thing you get. And the picture on the machine will tell you what it is you can get. It's essentially like a little mystery box. Oh, it's the black version. I don't know what I got, but there's a Pikachu something in there. Okay. <laughs> no, it's one of the Mimikyu's. He's got a hat. I mean, I like those more, oh, okay. honestly. And then the little Eevees, yeah. Evolutions. <laughs> Alright, that's the last one we're trying. Did you get it? It is, yay! Oh, okay. yay! I got it. <laughs> all of us, all of us that went on this trip are addicted to this Evolution one now. I want to get an Eevee Evolution. Yeah, if you get Espeon or Umbreon, I might need to do tradesies with you. Umbreon is great. Actually, what is this? This I thought it was before. Oh, it's not. Glaceon. It's Glaceon. She's cool. She's chill. She's. I show. Every time we pass it, and this one is everywhere. Every time we find these gacha stations, this Evolution one is there. We've all tried every one to get an Umbreon. We still can't get a freaking Umbreon, but it's fun. Getting a little pot plant? Yes. <laughs> all this cool stuff, you're getting a pot plant? It's nice. Getting <laughs> a potted plant? Are you it's a desktop it's garden. Nice. It is nice, It honestly. sounds like I something I like could it. decorate the house with. <laughs> Oh, that's actually a lot bigger than I thought it would be. Wow. That's what she said. Not for you. <laughs> this is my desktop garden. I do like that actually. Her name's Sarah. That's really nice. Thank you so much. <laughs> I thought it'd be real for some reason. <laughs> Don't know why. We're going for the Umbreon okay. so I can do a trade seize for the Flareon. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, don't thank me yet. <laughs> okay, well, we'll give it he a gets second. another one. Oh, jeez. It's the no. same one, is it? It no. literally is the oh. same one. <laughs> oh, Just no. disappointment is all I feel right now. Look, I like Eevees. I'll try one more. Oh. It's going to be him, isn't it? Yes. Yes. So it's color coded. Do you like that better? No. <laughs> <laughs> Good, because I don't want two flurry ones. <laughs> right now, we're in this, like, these massive hallways. Everything's opening right now. These massive hallways, four floors of corridors and corridors of these hole-in-the-wall stores that just had so many figures. Just figures after figures. Like figure store, figure store, figure store. It's insane. If you want figures, there's stores for them here. It was so much to take in. And the craziest part is every store had very different prices and very different things. So it was worth going into all of these to find the thing that you want. How do we, how do we purchase it? We tell them. Works what are you getting? This guy, he's a dollar. It's a Digimon. Oh. He's so cute. <laughs> Why did you get him? He's just really cute. There wasn't many video game places on these floors, but we did find one that had games, and I didn't know it at the time. I know now that it had really good prices, and as of right now, I still want to go back to it, and we're going to at some point. Yes, we finally found video games. There's a bunch of Nintendo stuff here. Um, there's a Famicom, mini Famicom. I forgot about that. 
There's weirdly a Nintendo Switch microphone accessory. I haven't seen that before, but the main thing, come over here. I'm on a quest for Dragon Quest stuff. So I see this slime controller. Now I did say I'm on a quest for Dragon Quest and this slime controller was on my list of things I wanted to look for. It just came out. It is a freaking slime from Dragon Quest that on the base is a controller for the Nintendo Switch. You see the oh. buttons? It's a oh. controller. Okay. I think I have to. Very cool. It is a controller. Yeah. That's that like just the... came out? Yeah. I really saw it. Can't wait to see how uncomfortable or comfortable it is. I can't see how this is going to be comfortable, but it's by far the coolest Switch controller so far. And it makes too much sense for me not to get this. On my quest for Dragon Quest stuff, I found this thing. I don't know if it's a light, but it's kind of cool. Don't have it. <laughs> Don't know what that place was called, but they had video games. I got Ononaki because it's multi-language. Tokyo RPG, all their games are usually multi-language, so I can play that one. And then as we were checking out, I saw this and I don't have this. So that's really cool. I'm trying to be really quiet. I don't want to be loud. Okay, let's keep looking for stuff. There is so much retro stuff here. I almost hate that I don't really collect retro stuff anymore. I used to. My channel, when I started it, was all about retro games. What do you see? I see a Super Famicom for $25. Like $26. That's not bad. It's not a little, bad at all. A little yellow, but... Yeah. But, you know, buff that out. This is yellow too, and I'm not hating on it. <laughs> and there is just so many retro games here, and gaming memorabilia from years gone. Ideally, I would rather open it. Yeah. The way are, you, it. are you buying it? I might. Ooh, how much is it? $300. Oh, dude. Is that $25 for that red pocket monster? Uh, a little less. Oh, $23.50-ish. Oh, I might have to grab that. But yeah, the prices there were really good. Just like with the figures and everything in Japan, every store has just vastly different prices. And you're going to see that throughout my videos on Japan. This is 110 I really want it. I've never seen this before. For 110 though, it's not happening. <gasps> they have them kind of separately? Oh, I kind of want to get a Sans. He's 20. <sighs> Blind box unboxing live. Well, not live. Not live. But live for us. <laughs> live for us. All right. So I get any of these. And then there's also like hidden ones that are like secret. So there's some that are not listed on here. Oh, it's a little bear thing? Yeah, it's a bear brick. This is series 38. When I was here last time, it was series 37. So here we go. Whoa. Are you happy with that? <laughs> Actually, it's kind of cool. Look at this guy. That's something. That's, that's something right there. He's eating a sprout of some kind. Don't worry, I have another one. <laughs> no, no, it's pink. Look at that. Look at <laughs> We've been in these floors of hallways for like hours now. I don't even know what stores to highlight, but this store just has like corridors and corridors of just anime just so much anime if there's something you need for anime it's here and there's like a billion of these stores <laughs> so then we left there and we took a train to Akihabara <laughs> Akihabara I'm just gonna say it that way and it's probably a really really English way of saying it but that's where we went <laughs> yes I know what I said and maybe I'm part of the problem but we've been playing a lot of Pokemon Go here. We went there to find ramen that Tyler really wanted. He said it was the best ramen he's ever had. And to, of course, find more video games. Question, that was the best ramen I've ever had. It's also the first time I've had ramen, so it was Wait, what? No, it was pretty easy to. Hmm? Once? This is the first time I Yeah, had... yeah. What? I didn't know it was noodles. <laughs> so we found the ramen place, and this was the next like culture shock thing, I think, is 
a lot of the restaurants here and just the places to eat everywhere actually everywhere is just tiny and everything is so efficient here you get in you do your thing and you get out you don't wait around there's no sitting anywhere I'm going on a tangent now and I know it but there is no seats anywhere in public you just you don't sit you're not allowed to sit on the ground we actually did that once at the end of a really long day we were really tired and we sat down while waiting for an uber to rock up and a cop actually told us to stand up you cannot sit down this place was amazing by the way because it is so small the kitchen is right in front of you and watching them make this food was just it, it, it was i don't know how to explain it it soothed my soul <laughs> So day one of Japan is done. Kim and I are watching Rugrats in Paris because we're trying to stay awake. It's only 8 p.m. <laughs> we got up at like three in the morning here though. You guys saw that I got this, this, and my little game. It was a really fun day. Did you have fun, Kim? Mm -hmm. We saw so many things. We did so much stuff. I'm excited for tomorrow, but right now I'm just gonna watch Rugrats and try not to fall asleep. <laughs> two starts and we're all so jet lagged this entire trip we keep waking up at 3 a.m 4 a.m 5 a.m we're slowly creeping a little closer to a normal wake up time but every day we've left the house before 8 a.m i mean we are eager to get up and get going but we just can't get our sleeping schedules to line up we wake up we leave early and we beeline straight for sunshine city the pokemon center this Frickin' place had Pokemon everything. Pokemon themed candy, Pokemon trinkets, plushies, toys, Pokemon cards, you name it. If they could throw Pokemon on it, they have thrown Pokemon on it. <laughs> there was life-size freaking Pokemon, a life-size Charizard, and Mega Charizard. There was even a actual Pokestop. That was an actual Pokestop. Uh, I found this Nintendo Switch soft cover. Looks really cool. Turns into a stand. There's Pokemon snacks, Pokemon plushies. I got recognized in here, which was random. <laughs> it's really cool. They had a stuffy for almost every Pokemon. They're like the ones you wouldn't even expect to get a Pokemon. The ones you never see have a Pokemon. Like there's like 800 Pokemon and I always feel bad for people that just decided they would love this Pokemon and there's no way that they're ever gonna make a plush just because you like that one Pokemon that no one else likes. But if you are that person, chances are you'll find a plush for your favorite Pokemon him. here. You like him? Yeah. He's, he's real nice. fluffy. I know. He's really cute. You want a Venusaur? <laughs> He's real nice. He's yours now. Oh gee, thanks. Don't put him back. <gasps> Poor guy. What, what you getting? And then I found this cup mug and I absolutely love it. Not only is it just adorable in general, the artwork on it is fantastic and the overall look to it is, is brilliant, but it's just, it's a mesh of Pokemon, which is obviously what I love and what we're here for, and Japanese culture in one. If there was one thing I was taking from here, it was this mug because it felt like a perfect souvenir. But I'm, I'm not just taking this one thing. I'm buying way too much stuff here. <laughs> so I just spent 12,000 yen at the Pokemon store, uh, not dollars. Yeah, so we spent 12,000 yen between Kim and I in this store, which is just under $120 way more than I thought I would. Actually, to be honest, I didn't think I would spend really anything. I thought I'd get maybe a trinket in Pokemon dollars, Center. But it still got a lot of stuff. And I got Kim a present surprise. Because I know that you wanted... Who's that Pokemon? It's Bulbasaur. We'll do a better haul when we're not sat in the middle of the mall. That rhymed. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff. That's my favorite. I found an Eevee plush, which I absolutely adore. They had a few different kinds of these Eevee plushes, but this one in particular just reminds me of my cat, Logan. He just, he lies flat with his face straight down all the time, and this is just how the Eevee is lying. I miss my cats a lot. I'm gonna get sad thinking about it, and this just reminded me of him, so I had to get it. All right, let's head back home. And if I can be honest with you guys, up until now, I, I, you know, I've wanted to pick up Sword and Shield, but I haven't really been excited, stoked, like looking forward to it. I've just been kind of, you know, waiting for it. 
But this whole trip has been so Pokemon filled and it's been so hard to not get absorbed by all of it that now I'm just super excited for those games. I can't wait. And I was definitely feeling that buzz in this store and I couldn't help myself but dive back into my adolescent years playing Pokemon. And then in the same mall, the Sunshine City Mall, I think that's what it's called. <laughs> there was a Toys R Us! I didn't know they were here in Japan. I know they're still in Australia. Obviously they've all closed down in America, sadly. R.I.P. Toys R Us, but there was one here. We're in a Toys R Us because they haven't all gone bankrupt here yet. <laughs> and there's just so many games that I don't even recognize. Like another horse game that looks brutal. I'm <laughs> kind of thinking, wait, is that $87? The Switch games, the Switch games were absurdly priced. I like, I I'm still unsure about prices here and what's a good price or not on Switch games, but just in the short time I've been here, I can tell you these games were stupidly priced. I mean, I like my horse games, but damn. <laughs> if this wasn't 87 freaking dollars, I would get it. <laughs> Maybe we can find it somewhere else. Actually, the prices here in general are really expensive as to what I've seen so far, so maybe Japanese Toys R Us ain't far behind American Toys R Us, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> One thing I will say is that a lot of the Japanese box art for Switch games are so much better. This is Nino Kuni. I don't know, I think that's so much better. Even to some extent, just the cases that are the same, I love the Japanese writing on it. I don't have a good example here, but there's just a lot that's different. <laughs> <laughs> We're being stalked apparently, but that is just so much better. Yeah. Go away! I'm looking at games. Stop! Stop it! You're ruining my movies. Stop it! Tyler and I, we saw um, um, the mini Famicom. Is that not just like a? What is that? No, so that's this essentially, but it's only 20 games it seems, and it has a cooler box. But 80. It's more though. It's more, but it's like I don't know some special version. I can't read any of this. So I have no idea what's going okay, on. Okay, Google Translate. See what it I says. I've already see seen the normal one around. The only one I thought existed while here in Japan. I honestly did intend on going back to that slime store and buying it. But we found this so one. So we figured out by Google, it's a special edition Japan exclusive gold version that has 20 different games, including Dragon Quest, three Dragon Ball games. And I think we're both gonna get it. Cause I was already gonna get the original while I was here. I think I've got to. to. I think no. no, I don't need to. It's three. It's different games. I don't care, man. Look at this. It's gold. This is happening. Are you in, are you in this with me? I'm getting it. Google Translate has been a heaven sent on this trip. You can hold your phone up to anything and it will in live view translate it for you. It is amazing. <laughs> It's legitimately so much cooler than I even thought it was going to be. Are you stoked? Dude, this is awesome. I love this so much. Look how the games are. But more importantly, Stitch. He's very This might be the coolest thing I will get on this trip. This gold-plated Famicom. A part of me doesn't even want to open this box. The box is so gorgeous. I love this. So, there's vending machines everywhere here. Here's four of them. You can get anything out of a vending machine. Right now I'm getting anime coffee. Next stop is uh, Super Potato, which is such a ridiculous name for any store. Uh, maybe not, you know, a store that sold potatoes, but it's a game store that everyone kept telling me to go to. Everyone. As far as I'm aware, it is the game store you have to visit oh, in Japan. Exactly so right. this is Super Potato. Everyone kept telling me to come here, so come here I have. Apparently it has games. It's definitely more retro focused than anything, but it has everything. Every system, every console, and then every game you would want to find for those systems and consoles. Oh... <laughs> They have all of the boxed pocket monsters here. When we were looking around um, on that first day, I found this for $25. This is 40, but this is in pristine condition. Like everything here is perfect and this is perfect. And honestly, it's worth paying twice the price for. The prices were high here. I'm sure with the reputation this store has comes higher prices and that's fine. But I will say that everything is pristine perfect. It's just one of those stores where everything is in perfect condition. I, I, I have to imagine that if it's even got a single scuff on it, they just don't even accept it in their store. And then they shrink wrap and package everything as well to keep it nice. 
so you are definitely paying for quality. And honestly, that made it worth it to me to pick up the red pocket monster here. The reason why I want red, by the way, and not yellow, blue, green, whatever, is uh, red is what I had when I was a kid, and then fire red. Nostalgia, right? And it's such a tiny store too. It really isn't that big, but it is packed from floor to ceiling in these tiny little narrow alleys in this store with games and games and consoles and consoles. And it was just amazing. It was like a little cave of games. Oh, that virtual boy is really cool. All right, I'm trying really hard to not let the retro collector in me come back out, but I've always loved Japan's GameCube boxes. I think they're the coolest looking things and I found Eternal Darkness. It's even in English on the side. I think I have to get this. Also, I really love the way the Smash Brothers one looks. But uh, that's 45, <laughs> don't think I need it. This one thing on. I knew about, but it's still funny to see, is that Xbox doesn't really have a presence here at all. This is the first time I have found Xbox stuff in Japan. That is their Xbox One section. That is their PS4 section. PlayStation 4 is obviously very popular here, but in my experience, from what I've been seeing, the Switch is insanely popular here. I'm seeing advertisements for it everywhere, video games for it everywhere, posters, pictures, everything. On the train, I saw Animal Crossing on the TV teaching me about birds. It's hard to turn a corner without seeing something switch a nintendo which is really cool to see i didn't expect it to be this big sadly i'm not seeing much in the way of collector edition things on this trip i really wanted to find these big box nintendo switch collectors things because they're actually relatively cheap here when you do find them. oh that's really cool 46 dollars <sighs> it's just such a nice little box it's a double pack of Link to the Past and Four Swords. For 46, I think it might be a little bit at my price range, but that is really cool. But I did find a game I hadn't seen before and using Google Translate, I discovered it was called Murder Seems Detective. It just looks really cool for starters, the art style, the animation. It's like a murder mystery game. I, I feel like it's gonna be a lot, of, uh, a lot of text, a lot of reading, which I'm not gonna be able to do, but I'm looking for Switch games that I don't think are gonna get localized, but just are gonna look cool on the shelf because if it's gonna get localized, I may as well wait. And I just, I don't feel like this one's gonna end up coming over. And Tyler and I played some Smash Brothers in here. It was very crammed, but it was a really fun store and a really fun day. Okay, that place was freaking awesome. They did have everything. I can see why people like Metal Jesus love it in there. Hey Tyler, how cool was it in there? <laughs> I'm going back tomorrow. No, nope, I'm going back now. You guys saw what I got. I got stuff. I got games. I love it. Okay, I'm, I'm done. So that's the first two days. So much stuff happened. I, I thought I would just make one video on this whole trip, but honestly, even just with what happened yesterday, which will be the third day, and then, you know, we have Disney coming up and we want to go back to some of these places. I'm going to have to do multiple videos. So if you're new here and you're enjoying this, there's more to come. Please subscribe. If you liked the video, like it and there's gonna be more coming thank you guys for watching it i'm having an absolutely brilliant time here we all are and uh there's another one coming soon with what's happening next we go to the pokey cafe we go to another pokemon center and we buy even more games something i find really cool about this place is just how quiet and respectful everyone is we're on like a busy street right now and I feel like I have to whisper because otherwise I'd be the loudest person on the street. In fact, whenever we're all talking, I feel like we're being stupidly loud. Those guys not included, they're working. <laughs>